Hello everyone, my name is Jeremy and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about part 4, episode 7 and 8 of a series of unfortunate events on Netflix. I mentioned in the last video that every single episode more and more changes have been happening to the book, so like with Bad Beginning, it pretty much stuck straight to the book. The Reptile Room made a few changes here and there, the Wide Window really took liberties with some of the storytelling, and the Miserable Mill really like pulled out so much from what was existing in the story and added to it and added new things. This was the big episode where everything came to a head with the parents and we finally figured out who they are and what they're doing. And no, they are not the Baudelaire parents like I suspected. However, all of the changes that were made in these episodes did not bother me at all. I think the changes that were made in every single episode so far I've not been bothered by. They weren't as drastic and unnecessary as the changes that happened in the movie version. These changes make sense. They take out a little bit of that kind of illogical thing that happened in the books. Like, the most illogical thing that's happened so far is making the moonlight turn into something they could use for a fire in the wide window. So uh, I am not angry about the changes that are being made. These creative decisions are actually really intelligent and they make the story progress faster. Right from the get-go though, this episode changes everything about the book. It changes how the children are getting to the mill and why they're going there. In the books they're going there because that's where Mr. Poe is sending them, though it's not entirely clear how they're related to the owner of the mill from the get-go. Even throughout the book, his relationship to them does seem a little suspicious. As to how they get there, in the book they go by train and this time they have hitchhiked and they're hiding in the back of a truck and making their way there. So already right from the beginning a lot of changes are being made here. Though it makes sense that they wouldn't want to stick around with Mr. Poe who's done nothing but not help them in any single way. It would make total sense that they would want to just get away and do what they've been saying since day one is that they should just leave and find out somewhere that they could be and they'd be safer on their own and I think that they proved that. Even though Count Olaf did catch up with them, it wasn't because of Mr. Poe's bad guidance, it was because Count Olaf's just a very intelligent person. When they arrive at the town, the entire town has burned down which is extremely different from in the book. But it does make sense in the context of fire starters and the fire department. Also, it's said that the Baudelaire parents are the ones who started the fire that burned down the town. Now, if we take the cues from the book and from what we've learned so far from the show, we know that the Baudelaire parents can't have done that, that something is going on in the town. The first person the kids meet in the books is Phil, but this time they meet Charles and they heavily imply that Charles and Sir are in some type of romantic or possibly domestic relationship and that Sir is just a dom top and Charles takes it. Which I mean, I'm all about. Charles was really freaking cute. He is exactly what I kind of imagined him in the book. I think the mill looked exactly in the dreary way that the book tried to paint it out to be. It almost was a little more upsetting, which I think worked for the favor of this storytelling because they tried to introduce a lot more humor into these two parts than I feel like they have in the last two. So I think that kind of having that, what is the word, um, that dissonance between the mill and the things that are happening in it was a really nice contrast. Look, it's a Georgia. We learn in this story that Dr. Orwell is Count Olaf's ex-girlfriend and they had a bit of a, they had a, they had an interesting relationship when they were still together. We also learn that Dr. Orwell has not just hypnotized Klaus, she has also hypnotized numerous people in the town, which I think in the context of what they've created for this town's lore, it makes so much sense that Dr. Orwell would want to keep practicing her experiments and Sir gets free labor as long as she still gets to practice whatever she's doing and he kind of just lets things happen without questioning it. The library in the town is much bigger. In the books, there were only three books, and in this one, there just seemed to be two, and one of them was just multiple copies. I love, love, love that Dr. Orwell was played by Catherine O'Hara, 
who, for any of you who remember, she played Justice Strauss in the movie version. So I was really, really happy to see that they were able to bring her into this story. And I'm hoping that we'll get to see maybe a couple of those other characters show up. Like, I would absolutely die if they could get Meryl Streep to come in for something. I would just, I would, I could not even. Seeing Neil Patrick Harris in drag was awful and simultaneously just wonderful at the same time. He gave me everything that I needed and it was exactly the Shirley that I pictured in the book. That's the thing about this particular episode more so than the other ones is that everything looked exactly how I thought it would in my head. Like the reptile room was beautiful and it, it perfectly encapsulated the book, but it did make some changes. The house that Aunt Josephine lived in looked more like the movie version, but not so much how the house was kind of painted in the book. Where like the mill and the dormitories, like it pretty much was exactly what the book painted it out to be. So like everything about these two parts were wonderful and the pulling of heartstrings with the quagmire triplets and figuring out that the parents throughout this whole series were their parents and then having them die tragically in a fire in front of us. I mean, we didn't see the parents die, but we can pretty much take from cues from seeing the twins sitting alone, plus what we know from in the book. It's very, very tragic. And it leaves us very fresh with the quagmire triplets in our minds. In the books, they kind of pop up out of nowhere. Like, they're just like any other character that's in the book. They show up for a season of the Baudelaire's life, where this time, their entrance is a lot more natural, and I believe that the book does make ties to the Quagmire parents knowing the Baudelaire parents. So it leaves us with this very fresh feeling, and it also sets them up to be regular characters in the next season. Dr. Orwell's death in the show made so much sense and really felt more natural than it did in the book. In the book, Klaus made this weird fishing hook out of a piece of gum, and that moved the log by grabbing onto the debarker and then it pulled the wood and that would have never happened. A piece of gum would never be strong enough to be thrown across a room like a rope and then pull a giant heavy log with a human being on top of it. So having the entire town being snapped out of their hypnosis and then having them barge into the mill causing Dr. Orwell to kind of panic and back herself into the fire, while it was tragic and horrible, it was a lot cleaner than her death in the book, which would have caused quite a mess, her walking into an active saw and getting blood everywhere. CSI would have gone weeks swabbing that place to clean up and crime scene, it, would, it just would have been a mess. So I felt like her death felt a lot more real, it felt a lot more natural, and I did find myself missing the full troop just a bit. In the book, it was the bald-headed man, not the hook-handed man. At the very end, we get to see the Academy, which sets up for the next episode, which will be in season two. Hopefully that's released soon because I'm already like wanting to see it and I'm, I'm missing the fact that it's not available. And I'm kind of hoping that they pull like a Walking Dead, where the first season was only like six episodes, but then season two was like a full 20 episode season. And so I'm hoping that the next season will have like the rest of the books and maybe like we'll have a third season to finish off like the last two or three books. But we find we got to have a small glimpse at the Academy, which like it looks exactly how I thought it would in my head. And I love the pan away that they had where it looks like a cemetery. It was just like, it gave me chills when I saw it. And it also made me laugh at the same time, which I think is what this series should do. It should make you feel like, ooh, that's creepy, that makes me uncomfortable, but it's also kind of funny at the same time. Seeing all of this end, it did make me a little emotional, knowing that I'm gonna have to wait a while before it's back on, but I thoroughly enjoyed this series that they've done. I have I really am glad that it's being done, and it's being done close enough to the books, unlike the movie which did make so many changes and take so many liberties, and I'm not angry at all about the changes that have been made, especially to this one, because I would say that this one, more than any of the other ones, has had the most changes to it. But the changes they made, made sense. So let me know what your thoughts were in the comments below on these two episodes, as well as the series on whole. I would love to read your thoughts. Thank you, and I will see you all again next season, and probably a lot more often on this channel. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!